If you picked up one of the new Raspberry Pi 4s, we'll show you how to install Kali Linux and even use the internal card for hacking Wi-Fi on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you've purchased the new Raspberry Pi 4, then you should know that it supports Kali Linux, which is truly exciting because this Raspberry Pi comes with a whole lot of updates from its predecessors. In addition, the onboard card also supports wireless monitor mode, meaning we can get up to all sorts of interesting Wi-Fi things with this Raspberry Pi. Now there are some disadvantages, and one of them is that the USB Type-C adapter was designed out of spec, meaning you'll need to get the right kind in order to power this Pi on because any other USB Type-C adapter just lying around may not do the trick. Now to get started, we'll need a micro SD card as well as a micro HDMI cable, because this Raspberry Pi does things a little bit differently than some of the previous versions. Once you have both of these things together, and a laptop that's capable of flashing Kali Linux to the micro SD card, then we should be ready to begin. But if you run into any problems, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. Once you have all these together and ready to go, then we can get started. Today, we're going to look at the Raspberry Pi 4 and putting Kali Linux on it. And this is really exciting because as you can see, OffensiveSecurity.com now features the Raspberry Pi 4 image uh, officially. So you can go ahead and download this via a torrent and put this on your Raspberry Pi 4 pretty much the same way you put it on every single Raspberry Pi before. And that's really, really cool because the difference between this and any other method is mostly the hardware involved because you have the new USB Type-C that especially only needs a certain type of adapter and a couple other things that make it really, really simple to get started if you already have a Raspberry Pi. Now you can download this from OffensiveSecurity.com or you can actually go to my favorite uh, WhiteDome.com.au and check out the Sticky Fingers build. Now this is a version of Kali Linux that's been optimized for the Raspberry Pi and has a bunch of different things you can add to it including this handy TFT screen which means you're able to set it up but just by uh, using a touch screen and get a lot of tactile useful information out of uh, well not tactile but useful information tactical information out of a relatively small screen so you can see that there's all these different ways you can set it up there's also a link directly to the download site and um, in general, I really like this build because it goes above and beyond and really has a lot of useful things like the ability to control the Bluetooth very easily, uh, as well as put the card into monitor mode. So the next one kernel uh, and the reason kernel are now uh, basically included in the official Kali Linux uh, 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 image. So while there is a benefit to downloading it from here because it has all the nice little extras pre-installed, of course you can get many of those same extras by downloading it from OffensiveSecurity.com. So again, this is going to be very similar to two of our previous articles. So I encourage you to read Build a Beginner Hacking Kit from the Raspberry Pi 3 Model uh, B+, which goes into detail on how to set this up, and then also Top 10 Things to Do After Installing Kali Linux. Both of these will prepare you after actually installing this to make sure you're not missing anything because we'll just be focusing on how fast and easy this is to do. So first things first, we're going to be using Etcher to burn the disk image. So go ahead and download the disk image either from Offensive Security or from um, whitedome.com.au. And when you do that, you can use this application Etcher to actually burn it to a SD card or a micro SD card. Now, Etcher will come up with a menu like this, which basically has the image that we want to burn, the card that we want to burn it to, and then a big flash button. You can download Etcher from, I believe they're owned by someone new, let's see. Etcher is Belina. Yes, so this is the new version. I have both the old version and the new version, and both of them work perfectly fine. So you can download Etcher and then You'll select the SD card or the uh, sorry the image that you downloaded either from the Kali uh, Linux uh, on OffensiveSecurity.com or the Kali Linux on StickyFingersWhiteDome.com.au. Uh, .au. So here we're, we are going to flash this. If we press flash, it'll go ahead and start. I've already flashed this as you saw, 
So I'm going to instead press cancel, but this takes a good maybe 10, 15 minutes depending on the speed of your card. Once you have this flash, then we're ready to eject the card, take it out and put it into our Raspberry Pi. And we'll go ahead from there and begin the setup process. Now that we've shown we can put the wireless card into monitor mode, the next step will be to just do a couple common sense things before taking any more steps uh, that just secure the Raspberry Pi against somebody using default credential based attacks. Now this means that most people who get a new device get so excited about it they never change the default password. So right now, if you have a Raspberry Pi and you're following this, just type PASSWD and then select a new password. And just like that, you have now made it so that attacks like the Raspberry Pi Hunter that go after default credentials will no longer work against your particular Raspberry Pi. Now, there is a version of this for SSH that we also need to do, and that is to change the default keys. If you have default SSH keys, it means that somebody could listen in on your SSH conversation, which kind of defeats the purpose of having SSH in the first place. So to prevent this, there's a pretty simple way of doing this. Type CD and slash etc slash ssh slash and once we're in this folder we can type dpkg dash reconfigure space open ssh server sorry ssh dash server oops oh no there's no, that's not at the end. There we go. And once this is done, then we've changed our SSH keys and made it so we can log in via SSH without needing to worry about somebody snooping in on our conversation or otherwise being able to access the contents of what we're doing. Great, all right. So this will take care of the majority of things we need to do to get started. And as I said, there's an article on the top 10 things to do after installing Kali Linux, but provided you have SSH running, you're connected to a network, and you've now changed your default password, you should be able to log into your Raspberry Pi from your computer and start updating it and running through all these steps without needing to actually have it plugged into a screen. The benefit of having Raspberry Pi is the fact that you can actually go ahead and just use it without needing to have a screen provided you're on the same network, and that comes from having selected previously a network that you will be connected to in the future if you're using Wi-Fi as an option. Now what I mean by that is if you've connected via just simply clicking over here and then selecting a Wi-Fi network, and right now my card is in monitor mode so it's not going to do that, but if I had selected and then joined a Wi-Fi network, it'll save that in a preferred network list. And for example, if I did that to my phone's hotspot, every, turn on, every time I turned on my phone's hotspot, my Pi would connect to it and I would be able to use my phone to SSH into my Raspberry Pi, which is pretty cool. So if you're looking to interact with this without a screen, I recommend you set it up, uh, set things up up until this point and then actually just SSH into it so that you can remotely manipulate it and don't need to carry around a screen or have an HDMI cable plugged into something all the time. The Raspberry Pi 4 is super easy to install Kali Linux on, and in spite of some of its shortcomings, it's definitely a way to get started using Linux without needing to spend a fortune. Now again, you're going to want to make sure you have the right USB cable, at least for the time being, because for now, the Raspberry Pi 4 does not follow spec and cannot use just any USB Type-C cable you have lying around. Aside from that, it does support monitor mode, so it's a great way to get started also hacking Wi-Fi networks and learning about the way that Wi-Fi hacking works without needing a separate wireless network adapter. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.